First off, I want to apologize to you guys for not making a lot of videos, but I had to do a lot of scouting, a lot of uh, situational basketball for Mercer Island Basketball Boys. Obviously, we had our playoffs this week, and we lost both of our games, so an unfortunately sad ending to the season, but of course, those guys worked their butts off. I have the coaching staff, the players, the team manager, I mean, everybody worked their butts off in that game. I just want to say thank you guys to the Mercer Island uh, basketball team for uh, putting me under your wing as a young coach, trying to continue and grow my game. I want to thank you guys, and I'm sure that we'll work harder for next year. But right now, we're here to talk about an NBA story, and I'm sorry to guys to bug you with that stuff. But now we're here to talk about an NBA story, and that's, of course, that Travis Schlenke, the Hawks GM, said that the Hawks would have drafted Luka Doncic if they would have kept their third pick. Not a lot of people know this, but if we would have stayed at three, we would have taken Luka. We worked hard with his agent. He did a physical with us in the morning in New York, but then Dallas came in an hour or so before the draft. I told them all along that it would take another lottery pick for us to slide back, and that's when the conversation got started. The deal moved back two spots to receive a top five protected pick from the Mavs this season was influenced by analytics. And analytics to me is what's probably going to either make or break a team. I feel like you need, and I know this is probably going to sound like I'm coming from Colin Cowherd, but I just agree with what he said. You need to have analytics and also uh, manalytics. So it's be able to like uh, have a feeling inside, but also look at the analytics as well. You can't be solely analytics because if you do solely analytics, you'll end up like the Houston Rockets did last season, even though they got within a game to the NBA Finals. They missed 27 shots in a row. They, they did what they needed to do that got them there. And of course they missed 27 threes in a row. And I just think that analytics itself just solely is just not gonna help your team, but you need other stuff as well. You can't just solely rely on analytics because if you do that, yes, you'll get the best opportunity in the regular season. But I think in the postseason, analytics just go straight out the window and you need to do other stuff besides the analytical stuff. And I know a lot of people are thinking that now that we're moving on to more of the Trey Young and Luka Doncic stuff, Everyone is thinking, you know what, the Dallas Mavericks won the trade because they got the franchise player. Look how Luka Doncic is playing right now. He's playing like an awesome player. He really should have been an all-star in my opinion, but that's neither here nor there. But at the same time, I think that Trey Young is a perfect fit in Atlanta, and I think Luka Doncic is a perfect fit in Dallas. When we look at Luka Doncic, let's start with him first. When you look at Luka in Dallas, we know that Dallas Mavericks have a history and a reputation of really developing international players. Guys like Steve Nash, Dirk Nowitzki, Michael Finley. I mean, a lot of those guys really started off doing well when they were in the Dallas Mavericks organization. I don't know what it is about the San Antonio's, uh, sometimes Houston Rockets, but more likely San Antonio and Dallas. They just know what to do when they have international players because they really develop those guys well. They know what guys are gonna be good in that scenario and what guys are gonna be bad. And I just think that now that they've added uh, Luka Doncic, especially under Dirk Nowitzki's wing, we're gonna see a lot of growth and potential from Luka that I think that if he would've ended up in Atlanta, I just don't think he would've gotten necessarily as quickly as I think that he would in Dallas. But let's move over to the Trey Young side. And I know this is the one that gets a lot of people upset because they thought that Trey Young was gonna be this amazing player who's gonna take over the league. He was gonna take the league by storm with this three-point shooting. But I think a lot of people are missing the point about Trey Young. When we look at Trey Young's stats, yes, you know, he's got 17 points per game, shooting 79% from the free throw line, and also having a field goal, efficiency field goal of 46.6. Not the best, not the worst, probably on the more of the worser side, but he's just a rookie. And I think that right now, Trey Young has finally found his footing. Obviously, early in the season, especially in summer league, he struggled a little bit. And I just think that that's just the cause for a three point shooter. He needs to get adjusted to the ball, to the the way that the court is it's a little bit longer now i just think that trey young is going to be just fine in this league it's just going to take him a little bit of time to develop that and i just think that the reason why people kind of expected him to do uh do it faster was because we live in an era where it's the highlight mixtape era where you know we watch ball is life and overtime and all these other sites that have these players when they're in high school shooting crazy threes even in college shooting crazy threes and making them and looking like an amazing player well, that's just because you're going against competition that's not as good as in the NBA. And I just think that that really blinds us as fans. I mean, it blinds me sometimes as well when I look at guys, especially Trey Young, because I was kind of on that hype uh, train for Trey Young. But then I had to simmer down my expectations because I understand that he's a rookie. When it comes to the NBA compared to college and high school, no player is really good or no player really develops their skill or even contends for an NBA championship until they're 24-25. So I think that now being a little more patient, seeing that these guys are now starting to develop, you know, they're starting as a young player, they're skinny, they're scrawny. 
I mean, Luka Doncic doesn't have an NBA body. Trey Young doesn't have an NBA body yet. They have to develop that, and I think that they will by their second or third year. But right now, they just don't have it. And even though Luka Doncic is playing awesome, and now that Trey Young is playing a little bit better, they're still very young players that are still growing. They'll have growing pains. And I think that's something that a lot of us have to realize and simmer down our expectations significantly. I mean, especially in this uh, highlight mixtape era, it all started, to my opinion, for me in my generation was John Wall. The way that he was able to dominate, you know, doing the John Wall thing. Uh, there's just a lot of stuff that the league and uh, older players do to you that you just kind of realize, okay, I haven't made it yet. I still need to work on my game and improve my craft. And I think that's what Trey Young and Luka Doncic will do. And I think a lot of people just expect Trey Young to be this lights out shooter. They're also forgetting the fact that he's going to be an amazing passer. For a guy that averages 7.6 assists a game in his rookie year, that's pretty good. Almost eight assists a game in his rookie year. I think that, you know, Lonzo Ball was close to that stat as well, but not going towards more specifically Lonzo Ball. I know a lot of people compare Trey Young to Steph Curry. And of course, you know, on this channel, I made an infamous video talking about how Trey Young would be better than Steph Curry. I still think that that'll be the case because when we look at Trey Young as a passer, I think he's more gifted and is able to uh, put the uh, money on the ball faster than I think a lot of guys will in this league. And I know that uh, that's going to be blasphemous to talk about, especially because, you know, Steph Curry is one of the greatest players. But I think Steph Curry gets too cute with the ball in terms of he tries to do a little too much when he makes that saucy pass, especially in the clutch moments. I think that Trey Young, once he develops and gets a little bit better, because I think this Atlanta Hawks team, when we look at everything that we're seeing right now with this Atlanta Hawks team, some guys are developing pretty well. You know, John Collins, uh, Kevin Herter, Trey Young. I mean, a lot of these guys are developing pretty well, and I think that Kevin Herter right now is doing a better job. Obviously, in some games, he's doing a lot better. He's very inconsistent right now, but I just think that this team has a very good makeup that a lot of teams like the New York Knicks and the Cleveland Cavaliers just don't have, and I really have more confidence in the Atlanta Hawks maybe in two or three years being a very uh, playoff-driven team. I think that they will eventually make the playoffs and take over one of these spots, maybe the Miami Heat, as Dwayne Wade starts to, or is going to retire, and I think that this team is trying to they're trying to break it up so that way they can start building new again because I think that it's about time that they do that. But it's going to be an interesting story to see what's going to go with the Atlanta Hawks in a couple years. And then just going back to the Luka Doncic side, for a guy that averages 20 points per game, almost 21, with 7.2 rebounds a game with 5.6 assists, I just think that if, if we would have reversed the order, if Luka Doncic would have went to Atlanta, yes, he would have been a great player, and I think that and ultimately that he will be the better player between the two but at the same time i think that luka Doncic would not have grown and his growth rate would not be as accelerated as it is now if he was in atlanta because i think atlanta they, they i don't think they needed anything else but i think that luka Doncic would have been you know it would have been a solid piece but i think you would have had to trade some of your pieces if you're in atlanta meanwhile in dallas he just fits perfectly and i think that even though dennis Smith jr is gone from the team being able to add a guy in Kristaps Porzingis really helps and we're going to see what happens with those two guys as they continue to grow and develop with one another and see if they can potentially you know win an NBA championship would this be the next super team in Dallas I mean right now when we look at it after trading Harrison Barnes they will have a spot for a max contract and we're going to see who's going to sign that max contract because I think that Dallas now that they've done it I think there will be a lot more interested free agents that would want to go to Dallas right now but that's just gonna be my opinion guys what do you guys think of this whole Trey Young uh Luka Doncic situation would you have traded Luka Doncic for a guy in Trey Young to get another draft pick or would you have kept Luka Doncic and just said you know what I'm gonna take my chances with Luka I'd love to know your guys' comments and opinions in the comment section down below and also guys what do you think is going to be the biggest thing for the Atlanta Hawks this season as they try and look for the next piece are they going to get one of the three Duke boys or are they going to get someone else maybe a bowl bowl if they want to take a chance on somebody I'd love to know your guys' comments and opinions like I said in the comment section down below please leave a discussion I want this to be an NBA forum type of discussion start leaving comments I would love to read them and also answer them as well but anyway guys this has been your boy Bernie here on the charge giving the latest NBA news and rumors and also basketball opinions and guys if you haven't hit that subscribe button i don't know what you're doing hit that subscribe button also remember to hit that notification bell to make sure you don't miss any of our videos that come out i will be a lot more consistent now that the, uh, high school basketball season is over unfortunately but anyway guys i will catch you in the next video peace